Hi. Right, so today I want to talk to you about distraction. So distraction is a good thing um, when you have chronic fatigue. When you've got chronic fatigue, you probably find your mind thinking about the illness all the time in some shape or form. You know, whether it's thinking that my knees hurt or like I feel dizzy or I've just got no energy. How am I going to get through the day? What will people think of me? I'm not going to be able to work. I'm going to learn, have lose all my money, etc, etc, etc. And the list goes on and on and on. So these negative thought patterns, these do help to keep the illness going. Every time you have a negative thought pattern, it releases chemicals from the brain into the body. It's like triggering the brain to say something is wrong. And then the body goes into like the flight or fight um, syndrome, which then releases like adrenaline into the body. And the more and more adrenaline you have in the body, it's good for short periods of time, but when you have constant flows of adrenaline go into the body, the body starts to shut down. It can't cope with it. And this is really what is happening in chronic fatigue. So the negative thought patterns that you have, you know, they are contributing to your body feeling the way it does. Now, by no means am I saying that chronic fatigue is in your mind. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when you have these negative thoughts, it does create a chemical reaction in the body. And then these chemicals in the body you know, they, they can cause inflammation, they can cause um, muscle weakness, they can just cause the body to become overstimulated and then, then you have a crash. So really what you wanna be doing is getting out of these negative thought patterns. So how do you do that? So there's many stop techniques that um, are out there that the Gupta program uses, that the lightning process use. They all use a stop technique um, to, to stop the thoughts. But you can do it yourself. You know, if you just catch yourself thinking something negative, you can just be a stop. You know, thank you for the thought, but I'm, I'm not gonna think that right now. And then go off and distract yourself. You know, whether it's, I don't know, baking, or sewing, or walk, wandering around the garden if you're able to do that, watering your plants, stroking the cat, reading a book, listening to your audio book if you're not able to read a book yourself. So, you know, there's plenty of things that you can try and distract yourself with. And then that sort of brings you into also the mindfulness space. So when you're doing something, you know, really try and do it wholeheartedly. So if you're washing up, you know, really feel like the temperature of the water on your hands and the texture of the bubbles and really feel yourself washing the pot or the pan up. Or if you're walking along, then you might concentrate on your arms swinging down by your side or hearing your footsteps touch on the floor. So whatever activity it is you're doing is to really observe how you're doing it um, and be mindful about it. There's plenty of books out there on mindfulness and there's plenty of YouTube videos on mindfulness to teach you how to do it. But essentially, it's just really being aware of what you're doing in that current space and time. Like you're not in the past and you're not thinking about the future. You're just in that present moment doing what you're doing. So they say when you're in the past, you know, people are likely to get depressed. When you're thinking about the future, putting yourself into future based scenarios then anxiety is likely to kick in so we want to try and keep ourselves as present as possible um, to keep ourselves in as a state of calm as possible so give it a go and find something that you enjoy to distract yourself with